when I was still in high school, and I don't want to date myself, but this was back in the mid 60s, acrylics was invented in the 40s, and in the 50s and in the 60s, an artist in Columbia, South Carolina, by the name of Jay Barton, became fairly well known for painting in acrylics. I'm in high school at Lexington High School, and I've made the decision to go into architecture. Why? Because at that time, without computers, it meant I could take my uh, belt tip markers, my pen and ink, my graphite, my charcoal, and just find a blank piece of paper and create. So that's what I was going to do for a living, for a career. And I knew that art lessons would help. So I drove to Columbia, which was about 15 miles away, in high school after all of the high school stuff and took lessons from Jay Barden at the Columbia Museum of Art. He was teaching acrylics. Fast forward, after about a 40-year career in architecture of creating, I was to the point where I'm punching keyboard keys and pushing a mouse and pushing papers. And so there's not that much creativity. I had my own firm, so I was doing more of that and just had to get back into the creative process. Not that we ever left it, it's just that it went digital with the computerization of the architectural profession, just like everything else. So I started picking up the brush again about 30 years into an architectural career. And the old thing, and when I got back into it, what did I do? I started with acrylics and abstracts. But four or five five or six years into the serious getting back connected with the fine arts, uh, I did switch to oils. And that came about primarily because, just like acrylics with Jay Barden, it came about because of the classes I was taking at City Art in Columbia and multiple workshops all over the country. But what do I paint? Typically where we travel and things that are outdoors are my forte. Yes, I've done portraits. Flowers are probably the thing I like best as far as still lifes, you know, set up a still life. I've got a light back here that I can actually set up a still life. My wife is great at that. So as far as what I paint, typically outdoor scenes, landscapes, and still life flowers, it starts with that emotional connection because I've been there, I've seen it, I've done it, I've heard it. I smelled it, and to me, it's telling a story or retelling a story. So how do I know what to paint? I don't until I usually see it. For me, it has to be an emotional connection. And because I'm visual, I'm equally left brain, right brain. My studio, when you come in the front door, to the left is the business end, to the right is the end we're sitting in now. So even my studio is a left side, right side, and I'm equally comfortable in both sides. But as far as, as creating a painting, because I'm so visual when we travel, and we travel for the purpose of seeing things, but also just searching out places to paint in addition to just seeing them, I create an emotional connection with it. I even, uh, you know, the, the 15 or 18 or 20 times we've been to California and just driven. California is a big state, as you know, but from San Diego all the way up past Mendocino, there are so many different things. We will buy typically a CD at the time and put it, not an eight track, I'm not that old, it was at least a CD, and put it in the rental car. And the music that I'm listening to when we're going to, whether it's Yosemite or wherever. Uh, when I get back to the studio, if I've had the opportunity to do the plein air studies, I probably would have even picked up a rock or two if it was the color of the soil I was painting. And I'll put the CD in the CD player over there, although I, I just go to Spotify by now. But all of that comes into play as far as being able to create, uh, you know, the Grand Canyon was a good example. I had a, uh, one of my favorite Paintings is the plein air study at Grand Canyon, and then the studio piece created here. But I had to have the, the screeching eagles. I 
found a track and the eagles and the hawks that you hear when you're spending four or five hours on the rim of the Grand Canyon uh, was at Sundance painting before sunup and the elks were bugling early on. The sun hadn't even come up. I'm by myself. I'm in my element in the woods. One of my favorite quotes of Degas, painting is easy when you don't know how, but very difficult when you do. And that is so true. And fortunately, I'm beginning to learn how little I know. So that means maybe I'm making some progress. Hello, my name is Ben Compton. My website is www.bencomptonart.com.